Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for Good Girls. So we are back. Our show is back. And I'm excited to be back because this is my... Um, I get the most traffic <laughs> um, on the Good Girl reviews. So I know you guys are glad that it's back. I'm glad that it's back as well. Um, this is episode 10, season 4. Strong hearts, strong cells. So Dean is making pancakes, cleaning the house, you know, getting the kids dressed and fed. Beth is asleep and he tells her, you know, go ahead and sleep in. I got the kids. I got everything. Um, that night when he gets home, however, you know, from running all his errands and doing all his daddy duties, he sees that Beth is gone. So, you know, it's obvious that she's at work. Um, Beth and Rio are discussing the artwork for the money that they'll be printing. You know, it's Canadian money now. Um, so she got questions. So where am I supposed to spend this? Like, how am I supposed to wash this money? Like, am I supposed to go to the duty free? How you expect me to do this? This is we're we're not working with American dollars anymore. We got a whole different currency. You trying to you know counterfeit? So you need to explain how we're supposed to do this. You know, and not get caught. Um, Rio gets annoyed and he's like Elizabeth. All you have to do is print and drop. That's it. And that's all. Be asking me no questions. Dean shows up, you know, out of nowhere. Uh, I need to switch the cars out. <laughs> you got the you got the van, and I'm going to need the van tomorrow morning. So, um, excuse me. Don't mind me. But I need to ask my wife, can we switch the cars? <laughs> he going to tell him, um, you ain't supposed to be here because he got an ankle bracelet. Dean is like, you ain't supposed to be here neither. So, I guess we both in a place where we shouldn't be, huh? Um... Beth tells Dean to leave, and he leaves, of course, but he got an attitude. Ruby is at the house, and she's folding clothes, and Stan comes in there, you know, giving her an update on the, you know, the fake designer bag operation. Um, they got a party coming up, and she say, I ain't coming to the party. I don't care about your new product. I ain't coming. Unless you can get along with Beth, I ain't coming. She tells him that he needs to play nice, and he's like, well, did you tell your friend the same thing? Keep that same energy when you're talking to your friend, okay? <laughs> Um, I'm really sick of Stan. Stan really got on my nerves in this episode. Not in this one and, and in, um, episode 11. More so in episode 11. Um, Annie and Ben, they're having a sit down with their new house guests, you know, to establish some house rules, no parties. Stop washing your underwear in the kitchen sink. Um, you know, <laughs> we're anti your music. We just, we just don't, we don't see it for you like that. Um, he got the shopping cart in the house. She want that to go. Annie and Ben are tired of their new house guest, the homeless man. Um, she asked him how long he plans to stay and he gonna ask when graduation is. Um, <laughs> you ain't got to stay that long. Shit. <laughs> ben wants to know, you know, what his name is. Is his name Kevin or Chris? <laughs> we find out that it's Kevin because I, I really, I, I didn't know either. Um, cause Annie, like, it's too late to even ask, like, and, and Annie, girl, you should have been known cause you done slept with the man. So you don't even know his name. <sighs> oh, Annie. <laughs> um, Beth is in bed and, um, you know, Dean is giving her her last minute instructions, you know, for the son's game. They're travel. excuse me, they're going to be traveling to his game in the morning. Um, Beth tries to explain away, you know, what my, what he might have walked in on and all of that. She's like, look, it ain't really what you thought. Like, listen, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> Dean, you know, he already knows, you know, listen, I ain't see nothing. I don't think I saw nothing. It is what it is. Just FaceTime me while y'all at the game. Beth is at work and her boss comes in, you know, and asks her about an order that was late. Y'all hear the ice cream man. We gonna let him go on all pass. All right, I think he's far enough. Um, her boss comes in and asks her about that order. And Beth, you know, she takes responsibility. She's just like, you know, the clients loved it. I know that they were, that, you know, the cards were late or whatever, but the clients loved it anyway. You know, it's neither here nor there. And the boss is like, well, you know what? We're going to make, we're, we're going to be making some changes around here. And um, she mentions another coworker and, and Beth is automatically like, oh no, don't do it. Don't fire her. Don't get rid of her. Um, and she says that that girl that, you know, said coworker is up for a promotion. And she's like, oh, really? You know what? 
What's the promotion? What she what she what she gonna do? She's been promoted to shift leader. And Beth is like, that's my job. <laughs> yeah, we won't be needing your services any longer. Thank you though. Thank you. She she had her shiny O'Neill. Thank you for your services. Thank you. <laughs> Boss lady says she needs somebody more reliable. You know, somebody that's going to be getting the job done on time, not late with the stuff. She told her to clean out her cubby, you know, and Godspeed. Beth and the ladies are watching like a blind dating reality show. Um, Annie and Beth think the people are actually blind. <laughs> Anyway, they have bigger problems and, um, you know, how they're going to print the money. Annie says, let's just break in and print, you know, all of what we need and just get on out of there. Ruby is like, okay, let's steal the whole thing. Beth, of course, is like, okay, how are we supposed to do that? <laughs> um, where will we put it? You know, they. this is when they're brainstorming. Ruby says she has a place. The strip club is empty. Um... You know, the owners, all of that. They done been sent to jail. So right now it's just sitting with nobody there. Stan still has a key. Um, and you know, Annie's like, Can you, you think you think he can get us in? Um, Ruby, Ruby says it'll take some convincing, but she's gonna have to be the one to convince him. It ain't gonna be no we thing, it's gonna be she. Um, Beth meets with Stan for lunch, and um, you know, he's being smug, of course. And he gets up to leave and she just blurts out, you know, like, I'm sorry. Is that what you want to hear? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, he sits down like, oh, what are you sorry for? Like, I wouldn't have even done none of that. If he don't leave this lady alone, your wife is 47. <laughs> she is grown as hell. If she wants to go out there and rob banks and rob grocery stores and, and, you know, make counterfeit money and launder money for a drug cartel. That is her business. That's her business. Don't come to me, the friend who's, you know, riding with her and we, we in this thing together. And you coming down on Beth like she is dragging, you know, Ruby through the mud. These are Ruby's choices. Nobody is making her do anything. And he continuously wants to hold it over Beth's head like... She's the reason that uh, Ruby was shot. Or she's the reason that Ruby is in. No, 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 no. <laughs> you need to take up all your grievances. You need to take them up with your wife. Because she's the one who made the decision to bring your family into the, into the crime business. Now, I got sick of saying. <laughs> um, basically, you know, he basically tells her, I want you out of her life. I'll help y'all get into the get into the strip club if you promise me to leave my wife alone for good. Like, b get out of her life for good. And Beth, you know, as hard as hard as that is, because they're best friends, Beth is just like, okay, deal. It's a deal. <laughs> you know, she just told him what he want to hear. Um, because essentially, like Dean facing twenty to life. <laughs> you know, like they have to continue on. They got it. They're going to have to print the money. They're going to have to keep working with Rio because Beth says she got, you know, a bigger plan. Um, Dean, we see him. He's at a meeting with, you know, his pyramid scheme friends. And, um, you know, they're talking about numbers and sales or whatever. And one of the guys makes a joke about the product stinking. And, um, the guy comes over there, gets down in his face and everything. It's, he's really giving Jim Jones. It's starting to feel like this is a cult. <laughs> At this point, y'all are in a cult and you're dealing with Jim Jones. But, um, it, and it's, you know, it's, it's really making me feel like it's a support group. You know, it's just, uh, -uh I don't like, I don't like this, this mess Dean is involved in. Um, he directs his attention to Dean and, you know, Dean had some good numbers last week or whatever. And, um, Although, although Dean likes selling the products, he's looking around. And it's kind, of, it's kind of like this. I ain't think I was getting in a cult. Like I don't know about this. He's, he's. Their activities have brought him pause. Um. Dean's, Dean ends up leaving the meeting, of course, and he's he left the meeting completely confused, completely confused. <laughs> um. Annie, she gets home to find Kevin. Um. 
aka homeless bay he and her him and all of his homeless friends are in her house they done took you know showers they got all their shopping carts lined up outside the door um they've used up all the shampoo it's just a mess annie of course immediately let's talk let's let's go talk outside so they go outside and um you know annie's like listen this ain't gonna work none of this is gonna work out i ain't gonna be able to do it i'm sorry and um you're going to have to go. You and your friends. <laughs> find somewhere else to go. And he's just like, where am I supposed to go? Listen, I don't know. Find somebody. Find somebody to bunk with because you can't stay here. Um, and he's like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. I'm going to just, you know, I'll just go. I'll get my things and I'll just go down to the school and let the, let the people know that I'm no longer your domestic partner. You know, I'm no longer his guardian. And, of course, she's like, listen, you ain't got to do all that. But, but Annie... <laughs> So you thought you could use him and it won't be reciprocated. Like, really, Annie? Come on. You've been using that man from since the time we met him. She's been using him to get what she wants. And now he's in a situation where he's doing the same thing. He say laundry day is once a month for us all. <laughs> he didn't invite everybody over for laundry day. Um, that's going to be once a month. Talking about some just give it a try. No, we're not going to just give it a try. You and your homeless friend, or just your homeless friends, because you already, you know, made a commitment um, with this guy as far as him being the, you know, your domestic partner and um, Ben's legal guardian. So, Annie, please, <laughs> you get what you put out, okay? And you just been using him, so it is what it is. Um, Cause she talking about it's gonna be too weird for her son. He said, "Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's just too weird, right?" <laughs> Beth, Annie, and Ruby are waiting for the store owner to leave. They sitting outside in the car, so they can go in there and steal the printer. And when they get inside, it's these two men in there, and um, you know, they're trying to explain why they need the printer. You know what they need from them. You know, they're trying to be coy about it. And then Beth is finally like, "You know what? Listen, listen. We just trying to steal the thing." To be honest, we trying to steal it. That's it. Can you help us get it out? And they're like, I ain't going to be able to do it. It's impossible. It's not happening. And, you know, they're kind of like begging at this point. Listen, it's it, our life depends on it. And the guy's like, I get all that, but it ain't going to fit through the door. So, I mean, you got something smaller you're trying to steal? I can do that. <laughs> um, They're brainstorming, of course, trying to find a solution. Annie thinks, do you think, like, how did they get it in here? Maybe they built around it. Ruby's like, oh, so it was just on a piece of land, just the printer just out here. I mean, where did it, did it drop out of the sky? <laughs> so, so before the building and everything else, it was just a printer just dropped down in the road. And there, and, and the lady just came along and said, you know what? I'm going to build a card store around that so we can use that printer. No, girl, that's not how this went. And, you know, Beth is, she's thinking herself and she's like, maybe somebody, somebody had to have put it together piece by piece. And so now it's like, okay, well, look on there and look at the manufacturer and see if we can call them. It's the middle of the night. You really can't call nobody. <laughs> and, and then Beth thinks, okay, Dean, Dean can do it. So she going to ask Dean to do it. Dean, I mean, Beth goes in there and, and try and wakes Dean up. She tells him it's an emergency, but she doesn't really say that it's real related. Um, he ends up putting two and two together, though, of course. And of course, at first, he's like, I, uh -uh, I ain't helping you with that. No. Um, but she tells him, you know, she has to help Rio. She figures she can keep him at bay. <laughs> if she continues to do what he asks, she can, you know, save up like she's been doing so that they can just make a run for it. Um and he, he says that he'll take his chances, you know, with a trial or whatever, you know, with a lawyer. And she's like, you're going to need the whole bar association if you think you're going to get out of this one. Yeah, we got to do this. We're going to have to print this money. <laughs> he say, OK, I'm going to go get my tools. Um, Dean, you know, takes the printer apart piece by piece. And, you know, they set up at the strip club. Um, Dean works into the next morning and then he comes over there and, you know, with the with the boxes full of um, the p the printer in pieces. And um, he going to, you know, put it together there. The ladies are working. And, you know, while Dean is putting it together, he's noticing how giddy and happy that Beth is. Like, Beth is really 
in her element. You know, she's having a great time with her friends. They laughing, kicking, and he like, bitch, <laughs> you ain't got the least bit of worry in your face or nothing, and you you just really having a time. You are really having a time. Okay, I guess that's what we doing. He asked Ruby and Annie to, you know, can we have the room? Can I have a room, please? Can I be? Can y'all excuse yourself so I can talk to this woman? Um, they excuse themselves. Um, Beth notices Dean, you know, giving her kind of a look. And she's just like, you know, so speak your mind. What is it? What's tea? Dean says he never realized, you know, what, how much went on, you know, how much went into the whole operation. You know, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a little impressed. And I'm also scared. Also very scared. Um, he's like, uh, so what will happen, you know, when we get there, what's going to happen? You know, are, am I going to still be worrying about you having Rio on the brain? Like what is going to happen? Um, she, he's, he basically feels like you have so much fun doing this and you've never had this much fun ever doing anything like with the family. So what is, what, what? How am I supposed to, you know, feel about that? And what am I supposed to believe? Am I supposed to believe that we're going to get away and go to Nevada and then you just not going to want to be dealing drugs no more? Or you just not going to want to be making counterfeit money? What's going to stop you from getting bored again, basically? Um, listen, she, she don't know shit. <laughs> um, he, you know, kind of gets up to leave because he, I guess he's feeling like, you don't want no family, no way. You don't want your husband and kids, no way. Like, why am I helping you? You know, he, he, Dean is starting to, he's, I don't know. Dean is starting to, um, he's starting to, you know, like he's not on Beth's, Beth's side anymore. He's starting to, to kind of veer off and only, and, you know, really only think about himself. You know, he on house arrest. He got all this going on and he's starting to feel like, his wife is the cause of it and she has no intention on not doing the same thing when they move. You know, like he can already tell that this is what she likes to do and eventually she'll end up doing the same thing with somebody, some other drug dealer or, you know, they know what to do. So, <laughs> like, they could definitely just do it themselves. Um, and that might be what he's afraid of. Um... Yeah, he says she the problem. She gets off on it. Whatever. Annie gets home and um, Kevin is still there. And he's in there playing with Ben's lacrosse stick or whatever. Annie just fed up. She basically is just like, listen, I'll lease you a place to stay. Listen, a place on wheels. I got you. Um, the little, you know, a little trailer situation. She's willing to do whatever at this point because she can't afford to have Ben kicked out of that school. Um, Kevin says, you know. At first, he thought that Ben was like a little douchebag. And then he, you know, come to find out Ben is all right. He's a cool kid. You know, he's a, he's a good guy. And um, he feels like that school needs, a, you know, a good dude like like Ben. So he ain't going, you know, tell the school nothing. And, you know, and he also says that you ain't got to buy me no, no house on wheels. Don't worry. Just promise me that you keep him in lacrosse and that he never quits. Promise me that. Dean is sitting in another meeting with the Pyramid Scheme people. And, um... He just blurts out out of nowhere. He stole a printing machine and that his wife has been laundering money for, you know, some dope dealers for, for a gang. And that she's also, you know, laundered it through his business and been washing the money and all of that. And she, oh, by the way, she makes counterfeit money. He done told the whole little group that. Why? I was so upset because this is not the time for you to spill your guts. You know, about what's going on in your personal life. That's why, see, that's why I'm, I'm saying it's giving cult-like. You know, it's, it's, it's like support group, you know, <laughs> for middle-aged white men. Like, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it, Dean. I don't know why you had to go and tell all y'all's business like that. But whatever. Um, the guys, you know, they rally around him. Like I said, it's giving support group. <laughs> Beth and her son get home from the soccer game and um, Dean is in the hot tub. You know, he got this, this look on his face because he's been listening to his friends. 
<laughs> Beth tells him, you know, that she can't promise him that she won't get bored. I can't promise y'all won't get bored. And I can't promise y'all won't want to hit a grocery store. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I ain't making no promises. Dean tells her he, end, he ended up fixing the printer and, you know, they can go they can go ahead and print. She asks him why he did it and he just says, um, he just let it go. Whatever that means. Ruby gets home. Stan is in there braiding their daughter's hair and Ruby tells him, you know, the operation is back up and running. Um, you know, they'll need the space until they find another space, you know, because he tells her, Y'all gonna have to find another space because they'll they'll probably be putting the building up. Um, the city will be probably putting the building up for auction soon, so we got to get it while the getting is good. Um, Ruby thanks him for working with Beth, you know, and she asks him, you know, what did you um, what did you know what did she say? And um, he said that, no. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. She asked him what Beth said. And um, Beth, and basically, she told him, you know, what he wanted to hear. Um, Annie gets home, and Kevin is still around the house, you know, gathering his things. Ben... He's actually taking a liking to him because he's kind of like, so where's he going? Like, where's he going to stay? He, he's worried. He's worried about his father figure. <laughs> um, it's looking more and more like she's going to let him stay, though, because Ben starts telling him that he played lacrosse. He was all American. Um, he has so much in common with Ben and he can, you know, be there for Ben. So she going to go on and let him stay. <laughs> um Beth, Ruby, and Annie, and Rio, they meet, and um, they show him, you know, the counterfeit bill that they made. And um, he's impressed, you know, whatever. And Beth is like, okay, so when you want the rest? And he's like, I don't. What? <laughs> like, that that be getting on my nerves about Rio. Don't send me on no fucking dummy mission. What? No, we passed that. We are past the dummy mission phase in our relationship. Please let me know what it is and what it's going to be, Okay. <laughs> um, he say, you know, he don't need for them to do nothing. His guys, you know, can't cash Canadian money here anyway. So all he needs them to do is print and drop, period. So they still on the hook. <laughs> <sighs> Let me get off of here so I can do um, episode 11. But be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light. <laughs>